things that you mean there have never been discussed from you. Hey everybody, I'm Sean Hartman. This is Dynamic Mobility, your blueprint for mobility. So uh, the first couple sessions are available on the channel. Uh, the first one, we worked through the fascial layers, uh, the lateral lines, all of the supporting side stuff. And then we started to work our way up into the interior lines, interior thighs, on up into the hips, up into the psoas. And today we're gonna work into the solar region. So that means solar plexus. All of this, these are the muscles we use to get up off of the ground. So obviously very important. And we're gonna work with that into the front line, which is this huge sheet of fascial tissue that wraps from the top of the toes all the way up to the top of the forehead. So uh, let's get after it. First thing we're going to do to get started today is work from the bottom up. So we're gonna start with this part of the feet. If you've ever injured this part of your fascial tissue, running or something like that, or twisting an ankle funny, uh, you know what that feels like. Not a pleasant sensation. This will help prevent that. And this will also help prevent uh, shin splints. That's also something that happens within this connective layer. So what we're gonna do is sit onto the tops of the feet like so. And then um, I'll present the stages here that we can go through. First of all, the very first step is to just try to lift one knee up and then the other. When you do this, you're gonna feel that engagement there into the fascial layer that goes all the way up to the top of the knees here. If you're feeling pretty good about that, you can start to lift both knees up with a little support from the hands. So just lifting the knees, rocking back as you do so. If that feels good and you feel like you can go farther, you can keep the knees up and just bounce. Let me show what this looks like from the side. So we're on the tops of the feet. We lift the knees and we're just kind of bouncing here with support from the arms. If you feel really capable there and you want to go even farther, you can let the hands go. Maybe reach out in front and bounce. Just be careful here because as soon as you get that weight, you're gonna, your body's going to adjust. And uh, if you're not ready for it, it could, could go a little farther than you anticipate. Let's bounce here wherever you're at in this for just a little bit longer. Last four, three, two, one. All right, so with this same principle in mind, we're gonna set the hands down and we're gonna work up a little bit farther. Uh, this one's gonna take us into a little bit of strengthening with the upper body. So we're gonna start to try to lift the knees. So we may press into the hands and just lift the knees up like this. If that feels good, continue with it. If you feel like you can go farther, keep the knees up and pulse. If you wanna go farther still, lift up the tailbone pulse into the knees, you can go higher and higher with this. These are the muscles that will eventually get you into a handstand. But we gotta start somewhere, and this is a great way to just lift and bounce and engage farther and farther up that front line fascia. We won't linger too long here. I know this one starts to get us into that deep solar core area as well, right into the solar plexus. All right, let that down. Um, Next, to uh, take this a little bit farther, we're going to move into a downward facing dog. So we'll find the down dog. Go ahead and pedal out here since it's the first one of the day. Right into the heels, feel free to sway a little bit, move into this, you don't have to be stiff. Now at our, the extent of our down dog, I'm gonna give you the side angle again, because in your best down dog, what we're gonna do then is press back a little bit farther. As soon as you do, you feel your weight come back forward. It naturally starts to propel you back. That lets you know that you're in that connective layer. So just continue to challenge that, just moving smoothly in. Don't let it be a jerking motion, smooth in, and then let it propel you back. Look for that rebounding sensation. All right, let's continue here for four more, three, two, one, this time as we propel forward, I'm gonna let you take it down to the knees if you like for this first one. And we'll come forward. As we come forward, try to stretch. You feel that stretch in the front core and all the way up into the chest. We get that whole front line there as we bend into this. You may be able to come to the tips of your toes and hover the knees. What we're gonna do then is find that same extra extension. So as we kind of pull back 
you feel it challenge, you feel it stretching, and you feel it pull you back right in the same way, just like we did with the down dog. So expand into the chest, open the front line. Let's do four more here. Three, two, and one. Let's press back here, back into the down dog. We're gonna put these two together. So we're gonna come back into the down dog. When you find it propel you forward, go all the way into the up dog. Stretch there, take a little bit farther until it propels you back. Once you find that rebound, we're gonna ride the momentum, okay? I'm gonna come back for a front view here just to kind of give another angle. So we're coming forward, stretch there and back, press back a little bit more. Let's do three more of these, two, last one, great. All right, so we're just gonna go back from the beginning, repeat, we'll start to speed this up, build a little bit of heat as we go. So lift the knees up first, find your best place here, settle back, support yourself however you need, find your best face, your best place of work here and just pulse into the knees. As this attachment to the ground is really uh, stretching us out into the shins and up into the knees. All right, now we're moving right to the next one. Press those feet in again. This time we lift up the tailbone as high as you like. We're on the toes, uh, the tops of the toes. Lifting up with the tailbone. Three, two, one. Those are intense. We won't linger too long there. Now we're gonna go straight into our combination here. That is down dog, fine down dog. Press back a little more until it pulls you forward. Take that right into the up dog, floating dog, or if you need to drop the knees here, you can do that too. Just take a little bit more slowly. You'll lose a little momentum, but it'll be worth it to kind of save yourself from any potential harm. This is to grow, not to hurt. One more time. Back and forward. Take it back into the knees. Lift the knees up. This is the shortest one. We should be pretty opened up, so just pulse. All right, place the weight into the hands. Lift up the tailbone, pulse here. Two, one. Come right into the down dog. Press back, bring it forward. Just one more. All right. Let's go one more round here, just quickly. Pulse into the knees. And then take it right up, pulse. Take it into down dog. Pretty quick on this one, just do your best. Down dog, up dog, just two times. Down dog, up dog and relax. Okay, next we'll move into our mobility portion. So this one's all about moving freely through the joints. So what we're gonna do to begin with is start ourselves off in a cobbler's pose. So what that means is to have the, palm, the bottoms of the feet together, the soles of the feet. You can kind of open up those feet a little bit. And then we're gonna extend out forward. Once again, we're looking for that space where we come a little bit past our comfortable place, right into a place of stretching. Look for that sensation once again of extending yourself and feeling your body naturally pull back. Here's the funny thing about the fascial tissue. It does not respond to uh, our neurons. It does not work in the, uh, with the nerves like muscles do. It's all automatic. It's, uh, it's just made, it's a tensegrity model that's made to adjust to uh, weight and uh, compression. So as we move forward, we're just challenging it, letting it respond. We can't really force ourselves to engage there because we have no real uh, power over that through our mind, just uh, placing it in a situation where it can condition itself. So this does that. That's what that rebounding sensation is that I keep talking about. Just two more here, last one. Okay, now, so we're going to uh, do this next part. Give you that side angle again uh, for this, because we're gonna lean back and bring the legs up over. We can start to take those back. All right, so and you come forward, back into your cobbler's pose. Reach forward. Collect the legs, take it back, and repeat here. Forward, find the rebound, take it back, just like we did with the down dog and up dog. 
reaching forward, finding that limit, taking it back. Your toes may eventually touch the floor, but don't make that a goal. Just let that be a nice surprise if it happens. Just work on your own extension here. I'm gonna come back to the front. Let's, uh, I'll keep it on the side view. That's probably the best to see the leg action here. Four, three, last two, and final one. All right, now we got our cobbler's pose here. And what we're gonna do is lift up the right leg. So you can let it set here if you need to, but do try to lift it, see what that engages with. And then we're gonna take it, at first you can slide this around to the side as we work through the hip and the knees and find this position, this kind of like deer or mermaid pose. Take it back around to the front. If you're getting the lift pretty nicely, then you're gonna want to keep it floating. If you can float it, then go for it. We're gonna do four more. If you need to slide it, you need to tap it, that's fine too. Last two, straight leg, bend it, working through the hips one more time. This time as we're back, keep it back, and we're going to level off through the hips. So uh, let me give you the side view again. So we're just in that same position. I'm just moving over to the side so you can see what happens here with the back leg. Shift forward a little bit until you're up on this leg. And then we're gonna level off this leg and lift it up. I'm gonna adjust back just a little bit here. All right, so keep both hands to begin with and you're just gonna lower down. Keep that back leg bent, take it up. So this is how we set up for uh, more challenging levels of this. All right, if that's working out well, Keep one hand planted, reach the other hand back. If you get a hold of the foot, you can go to this next level. Still supporting with the hands, lowering down easy. Notice all of this engagement throughout the low back. Very different kind of muscles and you feel a lot of that automatic action start to happen. Uh, to take this even further, this is pretty difficult, but you might get to this level. A lot of you athletes will get here perhaps of taking both hands to the foot and then lifting up. Notice how much that challenges. Be careful as you come down here. When I first started doing this, sometimes I would, like my head would just bang down because I didn't have the control to hold it out and I'm still not perfect just yet. But, you know, we're just, it's just a state of growth every time we approach it. So use whatever assist you need from the other side. All right, let's come back to our cobbler's pose here. We'll take it to the left side this time. So we'll take the left leg straight. And remember, you can be on the ground and take it around to the side. You can tap and start to float little bits if you can lift it at all. Or you might be able to float completely with the support of the hands. Let's do two more. Maybe you can lose the hands. And just keep them lifted. One more time. Straight leg forward. Take it back. Very nice. Now, um, I'm just going to move right to this other side here. Rotate into that right hip, bend into the left leg. Let's start with two hands, just to be assured here. Let's go take it down and lift. If you already know, you can go to the higher level. Just try to do the same thing you did on the other side, just so that uh, you don't do anything too abrupt here, from one side to another. Maybe one arm we lower down. And then maybe both hands. I like to start this one from low. Trying to go for both. You could also, if you happen to, if you're a regular yoga practitioner and you have a strap around, you could do that as well. That'll give you a little bit more room, but you still might find that action of lowering down and losing control. So just be aware. Always take it easy and just do your best. Use the support that you need anytime. All right, we're gonna take it back through this whole thing. So let's start. Back in our cobbler's pose is where we kind of set up for this whole thing. We're going to take it right into the combination here. So reaching forward, taking the legs back for four this time. Starting to move pretty quickly now that we kind of understand the moves. Our bodies worked up a little bit of muscle memory here. Forward, right from your cobbler's position. Take that first leg back and then bring it forward. It's one. Two, just two more here. Three, 
four, find the cobbler's pose again. This time we'll take the other leg around. I'm gonna switch over here for the other leg. Let's take it back first and then take it forward like we did the other side. Two, three, and four. Back into our cobbler's pose. Oh, I, uh, let's, let's go through each side now um, with the, the grabbing the leg variation here. Uh, let's start on this side. We'll take that first side back, shift forward a little bit, and then make your connection back here. Whether it's two hands or one hand, I'm gonna start with two and just try to go all the way because we're just doing four here. One, two, remember you can support there, I got the little bang there. Gotta be careful about losing control. If you're comfortable with it, it's okay, but uh, you probably don't want to uh, accidentally bump your head there. All right, switch over to the other side. We're gonna shift forward on the hip, bend into that back leg. Make your connection, whether it's one arm or two or none. And you can support on the ground with the hands. And we're just gonna go for four at your best place here. One, two, Support wherever you need. One side for me is definitely different than the other. Most people are. Perfect symmetry is pretty rare and probably non existent. All right, so take it back into our cobbler's pose. We're going to do that combination just two times through this time. Reach forward, send the legs back. Again. All right, right into our cobbler's pose. Again, so here we are from before. Take the first leg up. Take it around just two times. Forward and back, settle in, lift the other leg. Forward and back, just keep it segmented here. Back to the first side, take that leg back. We're gonna take that bent leg up. I don't know if you can see from this angle. We've worked on it a little bit, let's give it a try. See how it goes from this way. Just two here. This really engages the fascia you can. That's where that, some of that uncontrollability comes from. That's why we just want to take it easy. Be careful, switch around to the other side. Take that leg all the way back, bend into it. Adjust your grip accordingly if you have a grip. Otherwise, you can maybe do more reps uh, with the support. One and two. Nice job. All right, relax for a second as we get ready for our strength portion. So for the strength portion of this one, we're starting with low body. We're gonna start from a seat, okay? We're gonna work on our pistol squats. Uh, that's standing up with just one leg. So I'm gonna show you variations of how to get there if you're not ready to stand up with one leg. I'm gonna start with the left leg this time, just because this one's my weaker one. It kind of gives me a nice gauge. So first thing we wanna do is just practice lifting this leg. Let's go four of those, three, four. Now practice shifting the weight into that standing leg. Let me give you the side view here so you can kind of see that we're trying to lift up. So use your hand as much as you need to try to lift up and then use the strength of the solar plexus to try and rise up. Okay, you might get to a point where you can sit it there. Maybe you get to a point where you can let the hands go. We're just playing with it this time. Let's do two more like this, just trying to lift. And again, another lift. All right, the next level, we're gonna use as much support as we can from the hands. You might get a hold of that foot with one arm or the other and work towards standing up. Once we get up, we're gonna take that leg and try to, our best to float it through, tap down if you need to. Try to take it all the way to the back and find a standing split. All right, we're gonna repeat there. Taking that leg forward, trying to lower down best you can. Use blocks if you have them at the house. Use your hands for support, take it down. Lift, try to float that leg through best you can. It's a challenge. Don't feel like you have to achieve it. Let's do two more. <laughs> Last one, really gets into the quads and you really feel it in the solar plexus as you lift up. Let's sit it back down and go for the other side. I'll shift over this side now. So we got the other leg bending into. We're gonna stand to that, give this one a break. But first we're gonna lift, feel the engagement to the core. Three, four, now start to shift weight into that standing leg. You can keep that heel down if it helps. Otherwise, let me switch over here for two more. Lift and lift. Now see about staying up. See if you can support with your hands and keep 
your bottom off of the ground. We're going to try to press into this leg and see about standing up. See, I did that from the inside last time. Doesn't matter which arm you use to stand. And then we're going to try to float that through. Find our standing split on the other side. Let's repeat there. Taking it low. And lift up. Try to pull it through. Standing split. Just do your best here. Two more. Still need a little support even on this side. But it feels really good to be getting stronger in this every time. All right. Take it all the way down. Let's repeat here back to the first side. We're just going to do two through the full form. I'll just turn right around here. We're going to do our best to stand up. If you want to support into the legs, help with the ground. You can touch down anywhere you need. Lift up. Bring it through standing split. Back into our pistol squat. Use those little taps as you need them. Take it up. Bring it through standing split. Two more. I'm, I'm sorry. We're just doing two that time. You've done it. Good job. Go to the other side. All right, we'll get into the other leg. Let's start to lift into it. Walk your way up. If you're strong enough to just stand, go ahead and do it. Press up. Take that leg floated through standing split. Let's repeat. Lower and lift past the leg through standing split. Great job. All right, we'll give the legs a break for a moment. Get into our upper body work. So for upper body, Pretty simple ones here. We're going to come down to our a seat again and place the fingertips pointing towards you. All right? Fingertips pointing towards you back behind. Start to lower down. Adjust wherever you need. See if you can get down to uh, the elbows. Find the forearms there. From here, lift the chest. We're going to really work into the solar plexus here and into the triceps. Press into the hands, see about lifting. So you might just come from here. You may not be able to make it all the way down. If you do, then you get the full benefit. But if you're having trouble getting there, you're getting a huge benefit yourself. So don't worry about trying to match what I'm doing. Let's just go for four more wherever you're at with this. Four. Three. Lift the chest. Two. Two. And final one, some really different areas kicking in there. That's what's so great about it. All right, for the next part, we're going to shift over to the front, place the hands down, and we're going to lift one leg up, dip into the other leg, and just try to give a little hop. See where that takes you. As you grow into it, you might find more and more hang time. Let's do four more on this side. Three, two, and final one. All right. Take a break for a sec. Let's go for the other side. Lift the other leg. Bend into the other leg. Kick up. One, two. Feel that weight going into the fingertips. And that's all we're looking for. Two more. All right. This is where it starts to get... A little bit difficult. It's going to be fast though. So just bear with me. Do your best. We're going to come into a low boat pose. So extend the legs. Boat them the best you can. Take the arms back behind. If you need to come all the way down and relax, that's fine too. We're going to try to pull ourselves up. Find the feet. Use your hands as much as you need to get up. And then try to come up as if you're going to explode high. Take it back low. Use your arms however you need. Eventually, you won't need the hands. You can hop a little bit even. Let's do two more. I still need a little touch to get up. Every now and then, it'll just happen for me. One more. All right. We're going to stay in the low body and then go upper body because upper body is tough. Few and far between. We're going to take our first leg. Kick up. Lean back. And then we're going to plant into that leg and come up to the toes or leap it up. Once again, this gets us into the fascia because we challenge it going back. It clicks. We ride the momentum up. Let's switch sides. Other side, same thing. Kick back. Plant into that foot. Rise. Try to be explosive as possible. You know, don't worry about your athleticism. If it feels good, go for it. 
All right, here comes the upper body part. Come down, hands and knees. Try it this way first. Make a diamond shape with the hands. Press down, lower down. When you come up, take your right hand out wide to the side. Push up. Back to the diamond shape, push up. Other side wide, push up. One more diamond, push up. Great. Next round, feel free to go to plank with that. Let's take it right back to the boat. Bring it up and launch upward. Back and up. Let's start to move with it. We're almost done already. Two more. It doesn't take much of these. This cardio portion. One more side. I was already going down. Let's just do it. All right. Kick the first leg up. Back. Step. Rise. Back. Rise. Back. And rise. One more. Back. Rise up. Other leg. Take it back. Hop it up. Two. Two more. Last one. Great. Take it down low. Let's repeat here. Boat. Up. Hop. Boat. To standing. Hop. Two more. Boat. And up. I skipped our upper body there. Let's catch that. And one more round of the other ones will be good. So maybe take it to full plank this time. Diamond. First hand wide. Diamond. Second hand wide. Diamond one more time. Let's finish out uh, the series with the legs. Kick back. Step it up. Hop. Two. Three. Let's go right to the other side. Just three. Step back. And up. Back. Up. One more. And we're done. Great job. Way to go. That one's difficult. We're going to take this right into the vinyasa flow. This one's centered around that same energy. We're going to start off with a back bend. I'm going to start here. The top of the mat. Raise the arms. Lean back. Try to settle your breathing. I know it's difficult, but going up against that challenge makes us stronger and more controlled. Now fold forward. And melt into this one. Halfway lift up. Contract into the low back. Really try to expand into the ribs as you breathe. Exhale, refold. Just hang out. Feel free to move a little bit, sway if it feels good. We're going to make our way through Chaturanga, so you can always put your knees down and take it easy here. You can step back or float back to plank. You can drop the knees if you need. Either way, shift forward, lower down all the way or hover. Find upward facing dog. Lift up into downward facing dog. Hold here. Once again, we're trying to settle the breath. Now, start to arch into the back, just like an angry cat. Come forward over the wrist. Bend the knees. Drop them if you need to. Find a cow shape. Bowing through the back. Then lift the tailbone up. We've done this in the other practice, uh, so you might be familiar. Otherwise, just try to really arch into the back here. Then dip into the knees and lift the tailbone. You can hover the knees if you feel strong enough for that. Two more. Shift forward. And lift. One more time. Lift it up. We're in downward dog here. To the front view. Downward dog. Lift the right leg up high. And hold. Start to pull the knee in. We're going to pause here for a moment and compress that knee into the chest. You're going to feel the top core super engaged. This is called tiger curl. And step it forward into your low lunge. We're going to rise into a high lunge. Bring the fingers together. If it feels good, point towards the sky. Grow up through the ribs right here. Expand into the ribs. And now this little trick of isolation. Turn a little bit to the side. The side is the bent leg. Start to breathe into that rib. So expanding more so into this right rib than the other. As you're breathing, just focus on that. See what it does for you. We're going to take it even farther, bringing the 
forearm down to the knee. Take your hands into a prayer position. And now, breathe here. Now we're going to tiger curl that back knee in. Tap if you need to. Otherwise, curl it in. Step it down for this twisted chair pose. Twist. Once again, expand into that right set of ribs. Hold. Next exhale. Step that left leg back. All right. We're going to straighten up through the front leg. Straighten. And then take that opposite hand to the ground. Start to lift through the other side. Really challenging for the balance here. Just do your best. Wobble and shaking is great. All right. Now we're going to tiger curl that back knee back in again. Might take the hands here for support. Do your best to curl in. We're going to try to rise with it. So if you need to touch and rise, that's fine too. Otherwise, keep lifting. Bring that knee just as high as you can. Lift the arms up. Breathe. Now, I'm going to give you the side view here. We got that bent leg. We're going to open up the hands, twist, and hold here. Now we're going to maybe straighten this leg out. We'll start to release back center. I'm going to spin here. You don't have to. Just lift the hands back high. Got the knee bent and up. Now we're going to step it back. Reaching that leg back. See if you can keep it elevated. If you need to touch, that's fine. See about binding the hands behind the back, perhaps. And really try to pull into the hands. Grow through the collarbones. Grow through the, the bottom of the ribs. All right, and from here, let's get back to the mat. We're going to step this back. Step this foot back. Going over here. All right, step it back and then lift up through the ribs. Keep the hands back if it feels okay. Stretching the front body, lifting in a proud warrior. Now we're going to straighten the front leg and keep the bind if you can. Bow over that leg. It takes a lot of balance, so use your hands to support if you need. Humble warrior. And from here, let the hands come down. Walk around to a wide stance. Place the right hand down. Take the left hand up and twist. Once again, breathing into this top rib. Take the hand down. Spin around to the other side. We're going to bring that left foot up to meet the right. And start to roll up through the spine. We're going to find that back bend again. And now fold forward. Halfway lift. Long through the spine. Refold. All right, we're going to make our way through a chaturanga. You can always skip the push-ups and meet in down dog if you need to. Remember, you can always drop your knees as well. Shift forward. Lower. Hover or take it down, lift up to a cobra or upper dog, and then rise to downward facing dog. Once again, we're going to curl up through the spine, rolling forward, and then lifting the tailbone, rising back. Let's do two more of those. Arch the back, take it back. One more time. Now, we'll lift the other leg. So this time, we're lifting the left. Hold here. We'll tiger curl that leg in. Hold it. Compress it in for each breath. And now, step it forward into your low lunge. Now, we're going to rise. If you're interlacing the fingers, try to put the opposite one on top. That one always feels a little awkward, but it's worth going for it just to kind of balance ourselves a little bit more. Grow through the ribs. 
Now we're gonna do our twist again. So start to bring that right forearm for the left knee. Find the prayer position. Lift the upper rib, breathe into that space. Stretch the intercostals. Okay, now we're gonna float that back leg in the best we can. Curl it in, set it down, make that twist even more pronounced here. Really expand the breath into that top rib. As we exhale, we will expand that leg back. And then we're gonna straighten the front leg, take the hands down beside, and lift the other one up. Use both hands as support if you need in this kind of twisted pyramid pose. Now we're gonna tiger curl that back knee in again. Maybe use the hands for support here, maybe not. We're gonna start to rise. Do your best to extend that knee up, extend the arms up. Turn around to this other side again. You stay the same as we start to open up into this twist. Maybe a little shaking, most likely. Just know that's good for you. Now maybe extend the leg. We're gonna bring the knee, find our way back center. I'm gonna spin. You can stay where you're at. Now we'll start to look for our bind, opposite finger on top. Extend that leg back, pull the shoulders down and away from the ears. All right, now we'll set it down. We're gonna straighten the front leg. Back should be relatively straight as well. Bow into Humble Warrior. All right, from our Humble Warrior, We'll place the hands down, walk our way back to the center. Keep that right hand, keep the left hand down this time. Reach the other arm up. And we'll set the hand down, walk our way back to the front of the mat. We'll bring the back foot up to meet the front. I'm going to take it back to the side here as we roll up through the spine. All the way up. Back bend. Everything's going to go twice the speed this time. Two breaths at every position. Fold forward. Halfway lift. Refold. Place the hands. Chaturanga, your version. You should be kind of comfortable with what you... Uh, like this time, up dog or cobra, or maybe you're already in downward dog, and we meet you there. Start to curl up through the spine, shift forward, and then lift through the tailbone. One more time here, forward, and lift. We're going to go ahead and lift that first hand. I'm going to slide over. Lift that first leg, sorry. First leg up. Should be your right leg, I believe. And from here, we're going to start to curl in a little bit quicker this time. Low lunge, rise into high lunge. Point at the sky. Now we'll take left arm to the right knee. Prayer position here. Twist, lift the upper ribs two times. Curl that back leg in, set it down, twist even more. Step the leg back again, same leg, straight into the front leg, reach up, twist, and now we can bring the hands down, start to curl that back leg in again, we're going to rise here, lift the arms, and now we're going to start our twist, so I'm just going to stay in this position this time, see how it goes with the angle twisting towards the bent leg. Maybe straighten the front leg. Find center, bend back into the knee, lift the arms up. We'll go ahead and start into our bind. 
as we take that back leg back. We're gonna try to float it the best we can as we engage and lift through the bind. Now we'll set it back. Straighten the front leg, bow over the straight front leg. Humble warrior. From humble warrior, let the hands come down. Start to walk it over to the side, plant the right hand, lift the left arm up, stretch. Walk it back around to the front of the mat. I'm gonna take this one from here. So we're moving a little quicker now. Roll up, back bend, fold forward, half lift, refold. We'll chaturanga here or meet us in down dog. Lower, up dog, down dog. Left leg goes high this time. Hold. Start to pull it in. Step into your low lunge. Lift the arms. High lunge. Interlace the fingers. Opposite finger on top. Now we'll start our twist. Flare into those ribs. Twist as we connect the forearm to the knee. Prayer position with the hands. Twist it up. And now we're going to step that back leg in, twist even more. Step that leg back again. This time we straighten the front leg and do your best to come down. Lift the top arm, support with the hands if you need. All right, from here, we'll start to support with the hands, curl that leg in, start to rise. Lift the arms. Start to twist towards the bent leg. Straighten the leg if you like. Bring it back center, lift the arms, bend into the knee. All right, we're gonna work for our bind here. Opposite finger on top, lift that leg back. Pull back into the bind. Do your best to balance. Not here as long, so a little bit easier. Step it back, grow into Proud Warrior and straighten that front leg, dive into Humble Warrior. Once again, walk the hands around to the side, plant the left hand, lift the right, and then bring that back foot up to meet the front. Hang out here in a forward fold, relax. Great job making it through a pretty challenging sequence there. Start to take it down to the mat. Got a little bit more core work. And then we've got some really good stretching to get into the more plastic elements of our connective tissue. First, we got a little bit of a challenge here. Uh, we're gonna lay back. You're gonna lift one leg up. Okay, so the first level of this is to take the hands up. You can interlace the fingers, point the fingers like we did before. Come up to the outside and then to the inside. All right, we'll make a pyramid of this. So we'll take a breath in between, lift the other leg, come up to the outside, inside, release. Take two breaths here. That felt too easy. And this time as you go to the first side, lift the other leg to float here. So we've got a little bit of an angle here, all right? We'll come up outside. Inside, we're gonna do it again. Outside, inside, and release. Take two breaths to rest. Really breathe into the ribs again. This is how stretch out those top abs. All right, lift the other leg. You can hover the other one if you like. I'm going outside, inside. One more time, outside, inside. All right, you've got your method down. Three breaths here, and we're gonna do three reps on each side. This is the peak of the pyramid, so this is uh, the pinnacle of this exercise. Just get through this one, everything else is downhill. First side, lift, and outside, inside, out, in, one more, up, and up. Release. Take three breaths here. All right, other side, lift, outside, Inside, number two, out, and in. Last one, out, and in. Probably really feeling it here. 
We got three breaths to relax. And now we'll lift the first side again. Just two this time. So a little bit easier outside, inside, but just a few more reps. One more up and up. Lower down. Relax. Two breaths. Other side. Lift the legs. One. Two. All right, here's our victory lap coming up. We'll take two breaths and go back to the first side. It's just one rep. I know it's burning for you. Outside, inside, take it down. Big breath. Let's go right for the other side. Here we go. Out and in. Release. Breathe right into the solar plexus. I know you can feel it right there, right? Let your breath stretch it out. And then you don't have to turn. I'm just going to turn to the side here. You're gonna find your boat pose. So maybe lift the heels off the mat best you can. If you need to tap down here and there, fine. Otherwise lift, maybe you can release the arms. Maybe you can take the legs up higher. Let me see how high you can go with it, point through the toes. We're gonna hold for about four more breaths here. Don't worry about stillness. Take it back in. Take it down. All right, that's all the hard stuff. This can have its own challenges, though, as we stretch. What we're trying to do is stretch long enough that we get into uh, a state of plasticity with uh, connective tissue. So what that means is letting the muscles relax enough to stretch out the collagen layers, the ligaments, the tendons, and that fascial net that wraps around the superficial layer and then invest deep within. We'll start off with a wide stance here. Okay, just as wide as is good for you. We're gonna to start to take it down into a wide leg forward fold. Let's stretch into this first. So find a good position for your legs, start to breathe. You can press with the hands to take you back a little farther if you like. Don't press too hard that it doesn't feel relaxing. We've done a lot of hard work. Now's the time to work on relaxing and sometimes that can be even harder like some of us are just used to going 90 to nothing all the time and it's really a challenge to take a moment and let our mind rest and to let our body rest all right we're going to take the right hand and we're going to wrap it around behind take the, the left hand in support wrap around see how far you can wrap it it's just back here fine if you can find that little crease uh, right at the hip, right where the legs meet the upper body. Get there. Try to lift the upper rib again. See if you can grow and breathe into that space. Just relax here. Slow the breath down. Next exhale, release. We're going to go to the other side, plant. The right hand in support, take the other hand back behind. Find a wrap, maybe you find that crease on this side too. Wherever you're at, try to expand through that top rib. Breathing almost exclusively into that lung. It's not gonna happen, but the idea of it starts to really open us up into new areas. Got about four more breaths here. We have to hold these poses uh, at least about 30 seconds at the bare minimum, really 40 should be about it to a minute to really get the benefit here. Next exhale, release down. All right, you can bring your heels together and the toes together, heels, toes, and so forth until you find yourself centered. Then we're going to take it down to the knees. So like we did in the beginning, when we kind of pulsed and conditioned into this layer, now we're going to give it that really thorough stretch. So this can be one leg at first. Let's actually do that first. Let's start with one leg. Just to get it started. All right, let the first leg come down. Lift into the other knee. Let the traction from the top of the foot against the mat create a little bit more resistance to pull against. And then relax your breathing. 
and see if that relaxes the tissue. All right, so if you'd like to repeat on the other side for about four breaths on each side, you can do so. If you feel up for going for both legs, if that works for you in the beginning, and you'd like to go there again, this time it's gonna be a little bit different because we're gonna hold it. So let's find a position where both knees are up. And let's see about holding. Support with the hands however much you need. If you get to a point where you can let the hands go, just be really careful and keep them ready unless you feel absolutely secure. See if you can find stillness. Next exhale, slowly release. Use the hands for support here. Take it down. Let it all continue to relax there. We've got, like we did in the beginning too, uh, we'll, we'll just keep it right here. Get back into the tops of the feet. Place the hands down. We're going to press and work towards lifting those knees again. This time we're going to grow and grow and grow through the tailbone as long as you can. A really big stretch into the tops of the feet and now extending up the leg. Lifting the tailbone, pressing into the hands, pressing back. Really hard to relax in this one because you're using the strength of the arms to hold you up. But see if you can relax the low body. Transferring the weight, letting the arms support the stretch of the legs. Next exhale, release it down. I'm going to move out of this very slowly once again. All of these stretches we should release at a very slow pace so we don't create any kind of ripple effect in the fascial layer. Got one more stretch here, and I think, let's do this. I'll go from the side angle on this one. Come down to your belly, all the way down to the belly. Place your forearms down. Come on to the tops of the feet. All right, so already we're pressing in. We're stretching right into where we worked with the core section. Spin one leg, and maybe just go with that. You'll feel the stretch in the leg again. Maybe you can reach that same hand back and get a hold of it. If so, lift the chest. Maybe even press into that forearm, get even more out of it. And then as you feel comfortable, take that leg farther and farther in. Breathe here. Try to relax to the front body. Don't go too far that it becomes a labor. We already did the hard work. This is a different kind of work. Next exhale, slowly release. Really take it slow here, especially if you got really deep into this one. Take it nice and slow. Find the forearms again, if you're not already there. Bend into the other leg. We're gonna do the same thing for this side. So I think anyone can be at this position, no problem. Once we start to reach for the leg, you may just be reaching. If it feels like you're too contracted, don't just take it back to the forearms. If you get a hold of the leg, just test your your levels here and then maybe straighten through the arm, pull that leg in just as far as feels good. Really expand into the solar plexus area. Really let the breathing open up the front body. And go for two more nice long breaths. One more deep inhale, really fill it up. Both lungs, exhale, slowly, slowly release. Sometimes we get in these back bends and our back might want to lock up a little bit. So I find a great way to kind of deal with that if it's troubling you is kind of wiggle your way out like a snake a little bit. Just kind of moving through the spine side to side as we make our way to turning over to our back. Now, sadly, this sometimes can be the hardest pose of all, where we try to completely relax. Letting the thoughts that come through our mind just be passers-by just for a little bit. You know, you see that to-do list scrolling by? You can do it. You know, you'll, you'll probably get to most of those things today, if not all. But right now, our only job is to relax. All 
And those little moments, I mean, it's almost like when we work so hard, it's like we, it's like almost like inhaling constantly. And we never have that moment to exhale and really just release everything. This is that moment. So take full advantage. Let your body sink into the ground. You've worked really hard if you made it all the way through this workout. And you've earned a little bit of relaxation. Continue to relax as long as your day will allow you to. For those of us who have to keep going, uh, thank you so much for sharing your practice with me and allowing me to share mine with you. Have a wonderful day. Namaste.